attention for this. So first of all, we need to do is determine what kind of function is this? Absolute value, absolute value right? So we know it's an absolute value. I'm going to abbreviate with ABS. So I know my graph looks like this, or my function looks like that, right? So I know, I know so far that I can graph the parent function because I have studied the parent function of absolute value, and I know it looks like a V with a one-to-one -one ratio. So it looks something like that. Okay. Wait, so in figuring out the x value, the difference is always going to be on the one, always going to be x line. Hmm? Right. So for that problem, since it's in the parentheses, it's going to be positive, it's going to be always going to be on the x axis. Yeah, it's bars. well, it's the absolute value. Yeah, you could say your bars. But what that, I mean, this is the parent function. This is where it starts. This is how it looks like. Okay, now you. So just think, guys. You can always just. Plug in numbers. What's the absolute value of negative 2? What's the absolute value of negative 2? 2. What's the absolute value of negative 1? 1. What's the absolute value of 0? 0. So when you do that, you get that graph. Okay. Now, however, let's talk about the transformations. Our transformations, remember, are your shifts, your slides, whatever you guys want to talk about. Am I, am I adding or subtracting anything on this problem? Right, but I'm not adding or subtracting, right? So we say there's no transformations. You're not moving it left or right, up, down. Is there any multiplication by a negative number? No. no. So we're not, so we're not reflecting it at all, right? There's no reflection of the y or of the x. The only thing left to happen is we look at our dilation, all right? And now we can talk about dilations if it's inside or outside the function, but I'm just going to go ahead and, um, well, it's kinda, it, it matters when you look at this, but let's just go and take a look. When you have a, all right, whereas a is going to be inside your function, so you have f of a of x, all right, where a is a number that's multiplied by there, if it's not negative, if a is greater, all right, um, was it? a is greater than 1, all right, what's it going to do, Cody? is it's going to compress your graph horizontally. Or sometimes what we like to say is like uh, um, compress it or maybe stretch it vertically. All right. If A is less than 1, it obviously has to be greater than 0. If A is less than 1, then it's going to stretch your graph horizontally. Now. Ladies and gentlemen, when we did the transformation, that was easy to graph, right? You shift left, shift right. All you do is you kind of take this like a picture and you just move it, right? Or you reflect it. However, when you do dilations, you've got to determine different points. Rather than doing absolute value of x, we're now doing absolute value of 2x, right? So your x coordinates remain the same. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. However, now. I'm kind of getting out of my video. Um, if I do 2x, we have x and a y. Now I'm going to do negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So at negative 2, what's negative 2 times 2? Uh, negative 4. Negative 4. Absolute value of negative 4 is? Negative 4. Positive 4, right? Okay. Negative 2 times negative 2 is po negative 4. The absolute value of negative 4 is positive 4. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Absolute value of negative 2 is 2. 0 times 2 is 0. Absolute value is 0. 1 times 2 is 2. Absolute value is 2. And that one's 4. So when you, get, so when you guys look at this, when I graph this, instead of going negative 2, 1, I'm now going negative 2 to 4. Yeah, so it comes skinnier. Sometimes we say skinnier, fatter is kind of like the uh, layman term. But then you can go negative 1 goes up to 2. 0 goes to 0. So now my graph looks like that. Does everybody see that? Catherine, you got that? Yeah? OK. Yep. 
Okay.